Mount Olympus counted numerous gods and goddesses, to whom innumerable legends and myths were based on. Among them stood the wise and virgin goddess, Athena, the goddess of warfare, daughter of Zeus and protector of cities, she was the Olympian goddess of wisdom and intelligence. She was also regarded as the divine patroness of arts and handicrafts. In Greek mythology, Athena was later syncretized with an important Roman goddess, Minerva, who was similarly related with cleverness and war. Due to her sharp mind and bravery, Athena was the goddess of strategy as well. She was preeminently the deity of the city, the protector of civilized life, and the inventor of the bridle who first tamed horses for mankind to use. Athena was usually pictured as a tall and regal woman wearing a newly fashioned robe, her mighty armor with a crested helmet on. She carries a shield on her left hand, and spear on her right one. Although in other depictions, she carries Nike, the female deity of victory on the right palm of her hand. On her shield was attached the head of the Gorgon Medusa, given to her by Perseus, which could turn her enemies to stone. Athena is often shown with an owl, her sacred bird and patron animal on her shoulder, and was also associated with the olive tree. In some accounts, Athena was the daughter of Metis, a mythical titaness belonging to the second generation of titans, and the personification of intelligence and deep thoughts. Such a wonderful being has drawn the attention of Zeus, the mighty god and chief of Mount Olympus, who immediately fell in love with her. But, Metis didn't want to have anything to do with Zeus, and refused his advances countless times. But in the end, Zeus had the last word, and made the woman his wife. It didn't take too long for her to bear a child. Athena then entered the world in the most remarkable circumstances. Due to an upcoming threat of succession his second child would represent, Zeus learned from Gaia and Uranus that Metis would bear two children. The first one, Athena, and a second child who was going to be his son, would prove to be so powerful that he would overthrow his father. Zeus foresaw the fate that awaited him. If it was to be taken lightly, he would end up just like his father the titan Kronos before him. So, in order to circumvent the threat, Zeus seduced, tricked, then swallowed Metis while she was still pregnant with Athena. Time moved on and Zeus later developed painful and unbearable headaches. To relieve him from the pain, he had the smith of the gods, Hephaestus, to split his skull wide open with an axe. Then Zeus brought Athena to birth from his own head, she sprang from his skull fully armed, full grown and shouting her war cry. Presenting such a fearsome sight that the gods were seized with terror. Olympus wavered, the earth cried out, and the sea tossed and foamed. The sun god Helios held up his horses until she had removed the heavenly armor from her shoulders. Zeus was delighted and mesmerized with this wonderful being he had just released upon the world. Because of her personable, the goddess Athena ended up being Zeus's favorite child. He trusted her to carry his buckler, the awful Aegis, and his devastating weapon, the thunderbolt. Being the offspring of such incredible deities, Athena inherited her mother's wisdom and intelligence, on the other side she got her father's integrity, justice and righteousness. But unfortunately, after the birth of the goddess Athena, her mother, the titaness Metis would never be heard from again. In the earliest account of Athena, she was a fierce and ruthless battle goddess, but elsewhere she was warlike only to defend the state and the home from outside enemies. Athena's capacity as a warrior was quite outstanding and diligent on battlefields, she preferred tactic over savage force. Therefore she blessed those who used strategies to win battles and wars which on the other hand, was distinguished from that of the god Ares, who was associated with the more brutal, violent and bloodthirsty aspects of wars. In some myths, Athena and Ares come into conflict, especially during the Trojan War. In the midst of that war, she sided with the Achaeans, when Paris awarded the golden apple to Aphrodite at the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. Athena and Hera, the other losing contestant became her enemies and supported the Greeks against the Trojans during the war. Athena was also known as being the patroness of heroes.
She helped and supported great heroes such as Perseus, Bellerophon, and above all, Heracles. It was Athena who gave Perseus the bright shield that he used on his quest of killing Medusa, a monstrous creature who was turned into a gorgon by Athena herself, but then helped the hero to set Medusa free from her constant agony. Fearing for Hera's wrath, and for the sake of her son, the mother of Heracles exposed him in a field where he was found by Athena. The goddess was struck by the infant's vigor and cared for him. Athena was thereafter his protector and appears in many of the hero's myths, mainly in four of the twelve labors of Heracles, where she was great of support for the hero. But, Athena could be vengeful if crossed. As the goddess of arts and crafts, Athena was skilled at weaving, embroidery, and spinning. Quite a bunch of activities widely spread among women in the whole ancient Greece. Which bring us to one of Athena's most famous myth. The story of Arachne, a mortal woman skilled at weaving who claimed that her efforts surpassed those of Athena, the patron goddess of weaving. The deity visited Arachne in the form of an old woman and warned her to behave more modestly. But when Arachne gave an insolent reply, and boastfully challenged Athena at weaving, the goddess revealed herself and the two of them engaged in a contest. Following their challenge, Athena, in her anger struck Arachne and wished to make an enduring example of her. So, the goddess turned Arachne into a spider, and made her spin webs ceaselessly. Another anecdote about the vengeful side of the goddess Athena, was the story of Medusa. A beautiful, young and virgin priestess who served in her temple in Athens. But Poseidon, god of the seas and brother of Zeus who was having a feud with Athena, lusted after Medusa and raped the priestess in the temple of the goddess. Upon discovering the profanation of her temple, Athena transformed Medusa into a hideous monster with serpents for hair, and whose gaze would turn any mortal into stone. As I mentioned, Athena and the god Poseidon had quarrels, they both wanted to claim a certain Greek city. They agreed that whoever gave the city the finest gift would be the one to claim it. Poseidon struck the side of a cliff with his trident and a spring welled up, whereas Athena's gift was an olive tree. At the end of the contest, the people chose hers as a better gift, since it provided food, oil, and wood, which were quite useful for the inhabitants of the city. Zeus judged in favor of Athena as she had planted the first olive tree on the Attic soil. By winning the contest against Poseidon, Athena became the patroness of the city and named it Athens. Another epithet of Athena is Pallas. In one version of the myth, after accidentally killing her childhood friend called Pallas, the daughter of a certain sea god, during a friendly match, Athena took her name as a sign of her grief, distraught over what she had done. In another version of the story, Pallas was a titan that Athena slew during a war and flayed off his skin to make her cloak, which she wore as a victory trophy. Out of the three maiden goddesses of Mount Olympus including, Artemis, and Hestia, Athena was the chief and earned the name Parthenos, meaning virgin because she chose to remain a maiden. And her Athenian temple, the Parthenon is dedicated to her. In later poetry she is the embodiment of wisdom, and purity. Athens was her special city, the olive created by her was her tree. The armed virgin acted as a guardian of the city, often from her temple on its fortress hill. Her temple of the Parthenon on the Athenian Acropolis is still the crowning monument of Athens. Her interests were by no means confined to women's crafts, she could also serve as a patroness to craftsmen, such as carpenters. She was represented as a moral and righteous deity of whom few, if any unworthy tales were told. In my opinion, Athena belongs to the most famous and recognizable deities right beside Zeus and Hades. The goddess of warfare is well known in the Greek mythology as being accountable for some great achievements, the unconditional support and devotion to the success of great heroes. Athena never backed down no matter what the situation might have been or to whom she was up against.
Although she has all the merit of greatness, the goddess revealed to be really abusive in some occasions, as she couldn't contain her emotions by letting her anger blinds her judgment. Therefore, putting her divine might at use against mere mortals, who didn't deserve any punishment or curse whatsoever. But fortunately, she usually found a way to make amends and to atone for her impulsive actions, behaving like the goddess of wisdom that she was meant to be. Of course, you might want to tell me that there is a reason behind such actions on her part, which obviously I think there is. So, drop them in the comment section, I would be glad to read that. We can still see nowadays the influence the goddess Athena has in the popular culture around the globe, which by the way, might never cease to be. If you've enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, a comment and share. It helps me to keep on making more content for you people. And don't forget to subscribe as well and turn on the bell so you won't miss anything out. Feel free to suggest topics you want me to cover in my next videos. And as always. Stay curious.